Off the bench, Matt Bonner. That's okay, though. You want to run him off that three-point line. Don't let him get his feet set, knock down those threes. He's out there to shoot the ball. Barbosa, who does a lot of games this year, had wrist surgery. 44 games. Had a cyst removed. Now he's back. He's a luxury for this Phoenix team. Gives him a great deal of speed. Yes, he does. Rockets against Bonner. Trying to force it inside. Roger Mason Jr. Picks it up, and here comes Ginobili. Turnover number six for the Phoenix Suns. Barbosa knocked it away. Reach it around and picks up the foul for the Phoenix Suns. Now, we'll have to keep our eye, Kevin. If, if this uh, Suns bench starts to struggle a little bit, Alvin said, you know what, I, I didn't trust him enough early in that Portland series. I got to stay with them. In game five, he did in that Portland series. They had 55 points, actually 55 to 23 against Portland. Let's see if the Suns, uh, if they struggle to score a little bit, if Alvin will stay with his bench. But that's been a real key for him is to have the patience with that uh, with that unit. Because, Doug, he's given these kids time in the regular season. It surprised a lot of people when he kind of changed his ways early in that series, like you said. But that's what happens. Coaches go more to their starters. Right. You see with the Spurs. You see all those three stars are all playing a lot more minutes now than they did in the regular season. Blair into Amundsen. Juan Blair made second team all rookie. One of three second round picks that made that second team. He's out of pit. He's a 37th overall pick, and there's a connection to Phoenix there, too. Phoenix got Drogic in a trade and down the road a second went to San Antonio, and that second round pick happened to be Blair. Hey. Look at the twisting moves by Jerry Dudley, splitting the double team inside by San Antonio. Boy, he means a lot to this team, didn't he, Jerry Dudley? Yeah, he's. Uh... He's such a personality to bring so much in that locker room. Guys so trust him. They have so much fun. This man and uh, shoots a little floater going left. And here comes Dragic on the fast break once again, trying to get to that open court. Number three and seven. Dragic the other way into Ginobili. Out of the other way. Down defense. Transition defense for the Suns. And Ginobili slides in for two right there. You asked me a while ago about what do the Spurs want to do. They want to do that. If they can drive it back at the Suns, they want to challenge their transition defense. But Kevin, not with jump shots. Plays like that with Ginobili, get to the foul line or a post up, not quick jump shots. Six point game. Suns led earlier by 11. There's a turnover right there by Dragic. That's turnover number seven for the Phoenix Suns. Now, sometimes teams that run don't like to be run against. And so here Ginobili just drives it right down, gets to that left hand, uses the glass. The Spurs hanging around, down only six. Time now for a look at the Burger King double-double. Darren Williams along with Carlo Boozer for the Utah Jazz right up there. Powell gets off from the Los Angeles Lakers. Utah came close on the Lakers in game one. They really did. They, they were down big early in that game, I think, by 15. They battled back. Actually, were winning by 4, 93 to 89 in that fourth quarter. And guess what? Kobe Bryant time. I think he had 13 points in the last four or five minutes of that game. And... Once again, rescued his team, and they lead 1-0 in that series. Amari Stoudemire has come in for Channing Fry. That was the move by Phoenix, and Hill has come in for Parker. George Hill with it right now. There's a screen by Bonner. Kick and pop over Stoudemire. Bonner missing the triple. Here comes Barbosa. San Antonio, Doug, is not in a three in this game yet. Well, Amari's got a matchup now with Bonner. They, got, they should go to this and take advantage of this. There's no way that Bonner can guard him. Let's see if Amari looks to attack. Rogic stepping behind the three-point line, and a tandem came out to close out. By the way, we mentioned before that Grant Hill left the floor, went to the locker room. We found out that with our great undercover work, he was just going to the bathroom. <laughs> He's only played seven minutes in this game, by the way. He left with about four and a half left in the first quarter. Four minutes gone here in the second. Hill. Dragic's defense is apparent. Bonham. Amundsen will pick him up. Ginobili sheds Dudley and works right into Stoudemire. Will Amundsen brings a little energy off that Phoenix bench. Yeah, Maury Stoudemire, nice job contesting that shot. Looked like Ginobili was going to have a clear path to the basket. Amari Stoudemire over Blair. George Hill with the rebound. Ginobili. Dragic swerving inside and draws the foul. So hard to defend. Foul will go Marty Snyder on Amundsen for the first time. What do you have? 
Manu Ginobili going to the line here, and you see him playing with a nose brace that is on his nose right now. They actually made it bigger under the last timeout. Manu said someone moved it during the game, so they put a bigger piece of white tape on there. It was a busy three, quote-unquote, days off for Manu on Friday after game six with Dallas. Went through and proceeded to straighten the nose because the doctors were worried that it was healing crooked. Then on Saturday, they put sensors on his face, made a 3D uh, animation of a mask and then made the mask. Manu tried it, shot with it, said, you know what, just too bulky for me, so he's going to stick with this apparatus for this entire series. Kevin? Well, Doug, as a player, did you ever have to wear a mask? I, I didn't, but, the, you know, the thing about that, I, I, I think the sweat, the perspiration and all would really be tough to play with. In fact, and Tony McDice had a situation. He talked to Ginobili when he was in Detroit. He had it happen with him, and he could not wear the mask uh, because it was such a distraction. And Ginobili is one tough character, and he's going to go to the line here to shoot another free throw. But, you know, since he had his nose injured, I think if you saw that last graphic, his shooting has been down. Now, he told Marty Schneider today that he didn't feel like that injury, that uh, the thing he was wearing on his face was a problem, but he has not shot the ball well. The thing that saved him is he's been getting to the line a lot over the last three or four ball games. Nazar's in for Dragic. Hopkinson, Duncan defending. Duncan just came in for Blair. Green Hill has come in for Dudley. Those are the changes. As we got another six-point game and approaching seven to play here in the second quarter. Game number one. Second round. San Antonio and Phoenix. That says it all with a very colorful history between these two offenses. Battling with Duncan. This is McDice over Amundsen. A three by Manu Ginobili. Hill defending. Amundsen cleans it up. Here comes Leandro Barbosa. The Brazilian player. Reaching it all with the Duncan. Trying to regain his footing. He was back on his heels and... Tim Duncan at 34 years of age falling out of bounds on the driving Barbosa who came right into his lap. Well, you just cannot backpedal with uh, Leandro Barbosa. He is so fast. And what's going to happen anytime anything happens in this series, both these guys are just sort of falling backwards. And uh, there's so much angst in history, Kevin. You've talked about it. any little thing is going to draw the ire fans so uh, that was just a play where they both got tangled up and lost their balance and fell down there was absolutely nothing to that mason leaves with his first foul here comes jefferson back in the game and here is barbosa at the free throw line and you take a look at richard jefferson it's taken a while for mcdice and jefferson we talked about this earlier to get on the same page for this phoenix team doug as grant hill is back in with nash uh, they have played with a lot of urgency, especially since Dan Marley had a little talk with Grant Hill midseason about play with urgency every game, even in the regular season. Yeah, I got to have a little bit more sense of desperation. It actually happened right before that Dallas the Maverick game where they turned their season around, finished the season beautifully. Well, people don't give the Suns credit for it. They're a much better defensive team this year than they have been in the past. Look at the defense right there. Out of your words comes an Irish defensive floor, and they call the jump ball of Amundsen. And Antonio McDice, who has really brought it up a notch in these playoffs for the Spurs. You know, it's interesting, but in the year, the Suns' field goal percentage defense by their opponents was actually better than the San Antonio Spurs. Ginobili loses his footing. It's going to be a jump ball, but over the last 34 games of the season, the Phoenix Suns' opponent shot 44%, which would put them in the top five in the league. They're a better rebounding team. They're a better defensive team. And they are a team that still scores 110 points because they're a great early offensive team. And they get a lot of threes in transition. Richardson is coming for Barbosa. He pops one right there. That goes over Jefferson. Rebound by Hill. Nash over the Ducks. Parker just came in for Ginobili, who takes a breather on the bench. They've taken that splint off his nose, as you see, and with nothing taped over the broken nose. Hill is now on Parker. What we talked about, he's going to have yep. to guard Ginobili, he's going to have to guard Parker. This is going to be a total defensive series for Grant Hill. Robinson comes out, pick and roll with Duncan. Nice rotation by Phoenix, Stoudemire is there to defend. Lou Robinson once again, that energy and hustle off the bench. Nash double, ball deflected, Robinson. Nash had 17 in the first, he's got two in the second. Swerving. The mismatch on Duncan. A three. Rebound by Tony Parker. 
We missed a lot of time late in the season with a broken bone in his hand. Now comes off the bench. Doug talked about that earlier. Here's Duncan in a sandwich with Grant Hill and Amundsen. That's a Phoenix five. 5.21 to play here on the second. Amundsen, a very active player inside. Amundsen picks up his second personal foul. You like the pace coach of the game so far?